Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. Let's hop into our big story today though, all about Team Mythic, the stream team. I'll link their social media down below if you guys don't follow them. A great team to follow and becoming very popular as of late, especially with their Mountain Dew League rise. If you guys do not know, Mountain Dew League playoffs are going to start sometime soon with each side, the European side, North American side, taking 16 teams to the final event, guys, and they will compete for an ESL Pro League spot. So Mountain Dew League this season, both in EU and NA, has some really good teams on both sides because teams like Virtus Pro and, and Kingwin alongside other teams in the EU scene are actually not qualifying for Pro League because it's so competitive and alongside that a lot of North American teams like Torqued, now Tem Como being really well known now in Mountain Dew League. So it's been a great competition to watch but I do want to talk about a matchup though between Team Mythic and Team Subtle this past weekend and apparently though I do want to clarify as well neither of these teams had to win their matches to make playoffs. They were both kind of comfortably in that inside that top 16 spot although Team Subtle is in that 16th place spot they were comfortably there. They could have lost both these matches and still I think they were going to qualify no matter what but apparently according to Flom and, and Team Mythic they might have been trying to lag switch or actually throttle their internet to try and beat Team Mythic. Now again, this is, these are not their accusations. I think they, they maybe assume some things. Maybe they, they're not fully out accusing these guys, but it could be potentially true that Team Subtle actually lag switched or delayed their internet in a way that actually gave them the upper hand in a CSGO match. And I have never seen things like this blatant in any semi-professional, any professional CSGO ever. I'm going to show you guys several clips now of potentially Team Subtle actually lag switching or throttling their internet to gain the upper hand in a CSGO match. And you guys are going to see why that why that's actually a huge advantage. Upper, two, two, three, three upper, three upper. Dude! Oh Are you kidding me? Maybe take it. Triple, triple. triple. What? What? Okay. Two. Upper B. Two, three, three upper, three upper. What? Oh my God. Oh, Wait, God. what? And as far as I know right now, Team Mythic actually reached out to ESCA to try and fix this problem in the future. They're not going to replay that match, so although they did lose, they're comfortably inside that 16 team spot, so they're going to make playoffs no matter what. The match will not be replayed, guys, but if they were cheating, that means Team Subtle. If they were actually lag switching, hopefully in the future ESCA is going to watch out for these kind of things, and if teams try and do that kind of thing, make it that blatant as well, hopefully they'll get caught and of course have consequences and maybe be banned from ESCA altogether. And speaking of ESCA, maybe some bannable offenses out there, you might be being scammed by ESCA. Now as of right now, nothing's 100% confirmed. It could be an operational error on PayPal's end, but you guys might want to check your PayPal history or your credit card history, guys, because ESCA might be double charging you every single month. As you guys know, ESCA subscriptions are $6.95 per month, and they might be charging you twice every single month. As you guys can see by screenshots on screen, I'll link the full Reddit post down below. Thanks to that poster and all of you guys kind of making that viral. ESCA might be charging you $6.95, not once per month, but actually twice per month, effectively double of what you thought you were going to be paying. Now, again, people who don't check their, their billing histories a lot can easily be scammed by this, and and by the numbers of people that are actually reporting this scam, I do think it's not an operational error. It might actually be a scam by ESCA to try and draw more money out of a possibly dying service. Now, again, all these just allegations right now. Uh, no full response from ESCA on the situation quite yet. Check your PayPal history, guys. Open up the dispute. And also, I actually was reading comments on the Reddit post as well. This comment in particular actually caught my attention. And he said, I've actually opened the dispute seven years ago about the same exact thing. And he eventually, after winning that money back in his refund, was actually then banned by ESCA. Now, you guys know... Uh, in my in my eyes, Face is the great the best server out there. I don't use either service, but by, just so based on publicity, guys, what Face has been doing recently, it does show you guys they're putting in the effort. They're going to be a great service in the future, and hopefully doing a lot of great things very soon. As many of you guys are aware, in September, Face is hosting their next major. Hopefully, going to be a great major. Cross your fingers they can do that correctly. As well as recently, they've also launched all the circuits in North America. They've relaunched their North American circuits on the East Coast, West Coast, and of course in the Central Central Time Zone as well. They're doing a great job to keep that step above ESCA and this themselves. ESCA is bringing themselves down. If you guys have been a fan of the channel for a long time, I talked about this a long time ago, ESCA's $30,000 scam. My friend Mario actually was using the referral system, referring people to ESCA, and eventually opened up a case where they were not paying him the money they actually owed him for his referrals. Uh, so you get paid for referrals to the service. He actually at one point had over, I think it was actually over 6,000 referrals, and ESCA eventually refused to pay him the $30,000. So I have a lot of issues with ESCA. Do me a favor, guys, if you want to unsubscribe from them and go join Face It. Face is doing great things. 
things, and this just puts them way out of the way, guys. Face is doing great things. ESCA, they might be scamming you. Check it, open a dispute, get your money back, and uh, leave the service. In an absolutely stunning and huge CSGO news, I do want to apologize, guys. I've been really busy with the charity stream, so I'm a bit late on this one. I'm going to play you guys some clips and give you guys the evidence as to why I think Stewie2K could be leaving Cloud9, and of course, he could go to SK Gaming. Now, to quickly to clarify as well, SK Gaming is going after a lot of players out there. Of course, Tacos officially left that roster. People are thinking Bolts might leave next. Whether Bolts leaves or not, go though, guys, I really do fully believe the fifth player or the fourth and fifth player for SK Gaming, no matter how many players that do join, I think they will actually be not Brazilian. They either will be North American or European players. Of course, you guys are already aware they tried to get Simple and Flamey. That fell through. Other rumors out there, so they tried to get Nico or Shocks or heavy hitters in the European scene. We Let's go, look closer to home, though, guys. It could be North American players out there. And a couple days ago, we had a, a few clips out there actually surfaced where it could be Cloud9's very own Stewie2K. And they actually tried to get both Automatic and Stewie2K to join. And of course, we would actually assume that would be Bolts leaving too. But if Bolts does stay on, guys, it could be Stewie2K by himself. To give you guys evidence of this, I'll play the clip I played yesterday first. And this is on Jason R's stream where it actually was Tark who confronted the issue of Stewie2K. Apparently, right now, guys, it's debatable. It's in progress. It could happen of Stewie2K leaving Cloud9. Here's what Tark had to say. So is Stu leaving C9 or? I, all I'm saying is that if he goes, I hope I go. Damn. That's a development. That's a development. That's a story in the making. And another clip service as well. I didn't play this clip for you guys yesterday. If you have not seen this as well, this is actually on Brax's stream. He was trying to pull up TeamSpeak, and all of a sudden a message popped up from Automatic. I'll play the clip really quickly for all of you guys right now. And as you guys can see, he tried to even drag the team speak to cover up the Steam message, but of course, Steam message the overlay it actually goes on front. And I'll quickly zoom in for you guys if you didn't see what he actually said. It was automatic saying to Brax, I told Stewie I did not want to go, but I, I told him as well, if he want, if he could go without me, he should. So that was uh, that was crazy to see. And you guys could tell it was legit because first off, that's just a very honest response from, from automatic, right? I don't want to go, but if you can go without me, you should definitely go. And also, you could tell by Brax's reaction, he tried to cover it up. This is not like an this is not a, a, a setup by Cloud9, I don't think it was, but obviously it could be. But it also makes a lot of sense as well if you guys were on, on Reddit AMA for Taco. He was actually doing AMA answering all the questions yesterday, and here's a response to one of those questions on screen for all of you. He makes sure to note, guys, he says, I do not think any Brazilian could replace me. Now, again, this could be irony, this could be him being a little bit cocky, but it also could be a foreshadowing. Of course, we thought it was going to be simple and flamey replacing him. This could be him saying, they're not going to have another Brazilian player join, they're going to have a North American player or a European player join because no Brazilian could replace him. So in other news, guys, I do I do really think that Cloud9 Stewie 2K, he could be going to SK Gaming. It's all on him, though, guys, whether the negotiations are going to go through. Obviously, Automatic wants to say that roster's been doing you know decently well ever since their major win, though, a bit stagnant. We're going to see what happens in the future, though, guys. Stewie 2K could join SK Gaming. If you would have told me that any time besides these last few days, I would have called you insane. And also, just yesterday, if you guys did watch the V4 Festival Tournament, these are going to be spoilers for all of you. We do have Virtus Pro returning to a second place finish to Mouse Sports. That's Mouse Sports, guys. Now their second win in the last two months. They won ECS, and now this one, guys. There's some big prize pools coming Mouse Sports' way. It's great to see a finalized roster there, but the big surprise as well, if you guys actually knew the background of V4, V4 stands for the Vice Grad Group. That's actually the four central European nations, so you had to be, uh, your rosters had to be composed of players from those nations, and we thought originally, because there was only eight teams going, it was going to be a very, very easy uh, easy tournament a month ago when it was announced for FaZe Clan. Of course, when you show this roster, Mouse Sports being probably their owner, only competitor there, it was during the time where Virtus Pro is very very much struggling and besides that though I do want to say the one two three place finishes of this tournament were pretty straightforward we see this a lot with, with tournaments like WESG and this one as well where of course when it's a low tier tournament like this where you invite eight teams and over half of them are probably teams you never even heard about it's a very expected to have these top tier teams do very well they did so here but in surprising fashion it was actually Virtus Pro sweeping phase clan out of nowhere he was range response on Twitter luckily they do have a boot camp coming up sometime soon and what worries me about this and I'm not, I'm not necessarily worried but what kind of gets confuses me about this is we've had so many tweets out there from Virtus Pro guys. Of course, Taz is on that bench. Mishu has now joined that roster. They have not done anything substantial until now. This tournament, they surprise everyone and they sweep FaZe Clan best of three. They do a very close best of three uh, against Mouse Sports as well. Mouse Sports beat Virtus Pro 2-1. It went to map three very close and it kind of confuses me as well. We had the, we had this roster pinned as we thought there were going to be more future roster changes with Pasha tweeting out things like this. The, the constant questions by Pasha and other, other members out there who are still struggling like Neo 
Neo, people thinking they're, they're definitely going to make changes sometime soon. Maybe have other Polish players join that roster, kind of try and rebuild themselves up. Maybe have people join with Taz, other other players join Taz on a different roster and try and get their get back to their old their old playing methods. But now I'm kind of worried though. Is this success, success going to stay the same? Because of course it was a very big tournament, Classic Virtus Pro coming back in time for a big tournament with big payouts, and they performed quite well. Is this Virtus Pro going to stick around, or was it a fluke? Is the real question. Besides that though, congrats to Mouse Sports. They take home your V4, your title there, and again it's going to be a 200,000 euro prize. So congrats to them guys. A big prize pool there, and big win for them as well. But also a very big tournament. Uh, kind of be surprising to see how Phase Clan does in the, in the future as well. And alongside Virtus Pro, can they keep the success up? That's the big question. As always, guys, hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching as well as all the great comments on yesterday's video. I do apologize. I cannot reply to every single one of them. You guys kind of went off. There were just there were hundreds of comments. So thank you guys very much. I do appreciate it. I want you guys to know I did look at the comments. I just couldn't reply to every single one of them. So hope you guys all enjoyed. I'll see you all tomorrow with more CSGO news. I will see you later this week with a charity video. And again, thank you guys all for the great support. And if you guys do want to rent your CSGO skins in the future, Loot Bear, my link is down below. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode and always being a sponsor out there. If you guys ever want to rent CSGO skins, maybe other esports skins in the future. Future, uh, feel free to leave, use my link down below. It means a lot to me. Okay, as always, I'm gonna out of here, guys. I will see you all tomorrow, and uh, I'm still bald.